In my last year of college, it was the year 1969, it was a year of spiritual growth, but huge spiritual questioning and temptation. We had run into a group of reorganized Latter-day Saints. They had the kind of spiritual vitality that we were looking for. By we, I mean a number of us young people in a prayer and Bible study group. But they also believed the Book of Mormon and the Book Doctrine and Covenants. And I remember crying out to the Lord, saying, Lord, they believe this is inspired. I believe the Bible is inspired. How do I know which is which? And that led me personally on a search of comparative religion. Because everything that I'd ever grown up with and everything that I had always been accustomed to believing was suddenly challenged to the core of my being. And it led me down a garden path of doubt and questioning even the very existence of God. And I remember the arguments that I would carry on in my head with what in retrospect was undoubtedly the devil. And I, I wanted to believe and I would try to convince myself that scripture was true and no sooner had I talked myself into believing than another doubt came into my mind and down the tube my faith went. I don't know if you've ever been there. It is a terrible experience to have because you stand powerless in the face of things that are coming at you. And there was a place in the middle of all of that where life was so hard and so desperate, I call it the dark night of my soul, where I said, Lord, just let me die because this is too heavy for me to bear. To bear. And I, I, I kept crying out to God and nothing much was happening. And so finally I did in desperation, the only thing that I knew how to do is I took my Bible and I was at Calvin at the time and I went to what's known as the seminary pond, which is usually where couples go out to make out. I was in a mood to do that. And I took my Bible, and I, I remember the spot and the occasion to this day. I, I stood beneath a huge tree that was growing there. And I made a covenant with God. And I said, Lord, I choose by faith to believe that this book is your word, and I commit myself as best as I know how by your grace to live according to it. Because you see, I didn't want to be the kind of person who said, I believe this on the one hand over here, but really my life is lived over here in contradiction to what I say that I believe. I, I wanted to be a Christian with integrity. And I remember saying, Lord, if I get to the end of my days and I will have been deceived because I have believed your word, then so be it, and that's the chance I will take. But I receive your word by faith. I will stop the arguing in my mind, trying to convince myself I receive your word by faith. That's over 40 years ago now. And I can tell you that I have not for one moment to this day regretted that choice. Because while theories have come and gone, experiences have come and gone, the fact is God word, God's word endures forever. And by the time Jesus comes back, every word of God will have been demonstrated to be true and every promise of God will have been fulfilled. And my invitation to you this morning is to ask yourself the question, when it comes to deciding what is right and what is wrong, when it comes to deciding how do I make life's decisions, what do you base them on? Do you base them on what you feel like? Do you base them on what you've learned from your parents maybe? Do you base them on your own experience? Do you base them on your own clever thinking? Do you base them on your emotions? If you do, it won't be very long before you can think of a thousand and one reasons why what God says in his word is not true. And you'll be led down the garden path eventually. Because the devil will line it up. He will tell you exactly what your prejudices are 
and you will come up with a thousand reasons why what the world says about lifestyle or what the world says about marriage or why what the world says about sexuality or what the world says about life in this earth is to be preferred over what God says in his word. But if on the other hand, you can make the kind of commitment that says, Lord, I may not understand it fully. I may struggle with what it is that you mean and how to interpret it. But Lord, I choose your word as a guide to my feet and a light to my path. And as you give me grace through faith in Jesus, I want to obey you most of all. You will find that your mind, illumined by the word of God and empowered by the Holy Spirit, comes to life in ways that you've never understood before. And while the wise people of the world become more and more foolish, calling black white and white black, things will become simpler and simpler in your understanding because you know what? It's the truth that sets you free. And when God's word reigns in our lives with the power of the Holy Spirit, the most complex situations of life often become amazingly simple. Because God is God, and you're not, and it's incredibly liberating to know that reality. Stand with me as we pray. Father, we often say that we believe your word, and in many ways we do. But then your word comes along and uh, tells us a thing or two that we don't like very much about who we are, how we should live, um, what obedience to you looks like. And Lord, then, not infrequently, there is a struggle in our souls. Do I do what you tell me to do, or do I find reasons to go my own way? Forgive us for those moments when we eat again from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Help us to realize afresh how in Christ we've turned our backs on that and that in Christ we live by the word of God. And Lord, in a world filled with confusion and in a world filled with theories that says just about everything goes, Help us always to measure life by your truth and by your word. And help us in that way to shine as lights in a world that is increasingly dark. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. It's time. It's time for the reign of God. It's time for your light to shine. It's time for the kingdom of our God to be revealed. It's time for authority. It's time for your majesty. It's time for the kingdom of our God to be revealed. It's time. Kingdom of our God to be revealed. It's time for authority. It's time for your majesty. It's time for the kingdom of our God to be revealed. And these days it roars and famine. These days the hearts grow cold. These days grow in darkness there's a story to be told so we gather in the spirit we lift up a prayer of faith we proclaim the mighty word of God the power in your name it's time for the reign of God it's time for your light to 
shine each time for the kingdom of our God to be revealed each time for authority each time for your majesty each time for the kingdom of our God to be revealed for the captives of rebellion Addicted and deceived For those who wandered far from home It's time to intercede So we gather in the Spirit We lift up a prayer of faith We proclaim the mighty word of God The power in your name The power in your name It's time God, it's time for your light to shine. It's time for the kingdom of our God to be revealed. It's time for authority. It's time for your majesty. It's time for the kingdom of our God to be revealed. It's time for the rain. God, it's time for your light to shine. It's time for the kingdom of our God to be revealed. It's time for a glory. 